we're going to have a time now for just some sharing. And uh, you're welcome to stand where you are and speak loud. Or you're welcome to come up here and use the microphone, whichever is best for you. So uh, if there's a, a story or a, a feeling, an emotion, or an experience that you uh, might be serious, that might be funny, you'd like to share, uh, please do that now. I was going, I wasn't going to, but I So I have two things to share. I'm Jamie. I use, what would you say, granddaughter in law. Um, so I think it's important for me to say this just because I lost my grandmother in June. No, April. And one thing I know about that generation is they don't really talk. <laughs> they keep their feelings, emotions, everything pretty tight locked in their box. I've also had, I think, the great pleasure to help and work with many seniors. And while they do have a lot of stories to share that we can learn from, um, family, they like to keep locked shut. So the one thing that I would say to all of the family members is remember that they deep down do love us. Um, they want you to love each other and, um, and to do better than what they had. Just like you want your kids to do better than you did. It's kind of a generational thing, right? And so, so think about that. And um, the one thing Grandpa did want, or that he learned at the end, is to love, right? And to show that love. And I think that's what he would want all of us to do, is to really show each other that love and to continue in what he was doing. So think about that. Um, when you go home and you're thinking about this and thinking about Grandpa, is how much he loved everyone to the point where we had to write on the door no visitors because he would still try to talk, even though he couldn't. He would still try to talk to each and every resident here Aww. when he needed to really just rest. <laughs> Even when he couldn't talk, he would still shoot out, and I love you. It was the sweetest thing in the whole world. And then Cheryl really wanted me to share this story, because I think all the grandkids know, and then even the great-grandkids especially, is Grandpa had this wonderful thing that he knew everyone's birthday, like, and it better than I think any of us. Do anyone know Grandpa's birthday like we do? Or like he did? I don't. No, no, none of the family does. Grandma knows everyone's birthday. And Grandpa was really great at sharing for every year they would turn, he would give the kids a dollar bill. So for his, was it 90th birthday? His 90th birthday, we all gathered up $91 bills and gave him that for his birthday present. And he just really loved that. We always shoved it in a car. And the car was like that. It was really awesome. And so he really appreciated that. Yes, he was. So there, I shared your story, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I just wanted to say that every morning that when he was pop into the dining room here, and he'd say, well, the, the Mariners lost or they won. <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. Blazers won or lost, you know. Yeah, I had to come in and tell us right away. <laughs> it's very true. He wanted the schedule at the very last. Yes, he did. <laughs> he wanted the Blazers schedule? Yes. Oh, he, he was like... <laughs> Taking his last breath, he wanted to know what the blazer schedule was. I did to do them. I know. Thank you. Um, boy, I loved Mindo. Um, what a great man. He was certainly a. I'm glad he lived as long as he did. That I've had a chance to know him these last three years. And. Um, I'm the one that changed all those dollar bills into 20s. He'd bring them down. <laughs> <laughs> I got some more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that tune. So anyway, that was a great.
great story and he shared it often. Um, and I have to say, he was so proud of each and every one of you. He told us story after story of his family, of his grandkids, of everyone. So he loved you and, and we all knew it. So you can hang on to that. Um, thank you for sharing your dad he, and your grandpa, your great grandpa. He was just amazing, as we all know. And um, the day, my husband um, has an has a app on his phone that gives a quote of the day. And the day I got the text that Wendell had passed, this is the quote of the day. And I thought it was very fitting for Wendell. A good character is the best tombstone. Those who loved you and were helped by you will remember you when forget-me-nots are withered. Carve your name on hearts and not on marble. Charles Spurgeon. And we are all a testament that he carved his initials on our hearts. And we will take that with us forever. So thank you. Thank you, Sue. Love you, Very good. Someone else? Here comes someone else. Thank you. My name is Amy, and I was blessed to get to be Wendell's um, life enrichment director here at Avamirit Sandy. Um, yeah, I'm like 100 pounds lighter, so everyone's like, who is she? No. <laughs> but um, Wendell was so proud of me with my weight loss, by the way. But anyways, I just wanted to share, um, I, I've known him for like seven years now, and um, I am very grateful I got to come visit him. It's been two years since I left Avamir. And I'm really grateful I got to spend a solid good hour with him uh, last month. And, sorry, I know he was old enough to be like my grandpa, but um, he's really like another like father figure to me. Well, all the residents here are like family. So, first of all, thank you, like Susan said, for sharing your dad and grandpa and great grandpa with all of us here at Avenir because he really became our family as well. Uh, he was the president of our resident council when I was hired here. He took that position very seriously and with great passion. Um, he, uh, his love for his wife is something, um, gosh, I, I think we should all aspire to. It was a beautiful love story. Um, from how he met his wife, if I remember correctly. Um, she lived on the border of the school field there, and Wendell would find every reason to, you know, kick that ball into her yard, and, um, uh, gosh. So his love for his wife, I will always carry that with me, all his life lessons. Um, but about the part about him just discovering that he wasn't, you know, good at being audible, I love you, that was one of the things that took up probably a good 30 minutes of our hour-long visit to his immediate family here. He was crying, and <clears throat> I was crying, but, you know, he was just telling me, Amy, make sure you're not holding that back. And I'm like, I don't have that problem. I never shut up. <laughs> okay. But um, Wendell, Susan, and Debbie, his other life enrichment director, I mean, we can all tell you a million stories, but we'd be here all night. But I just want to tell you, every single day that man was at our exercise class, uh, just about all of our activities, all of our trophies in that trophy case over there for the wee bowling, Wendell had a huge part in that. Um, he just, that man knew how to live, he knew how to encourage others. Um, but every day, you guys, he told us stories about you. His family right here. I mean, I, I feel like I, you, the birthdays, he would celebrate every birthday, anniversary, the twins' birthday, his daughter. Um, and I do, just last thing and then I'll shut up. There's so much I loved about one doll. Literally would go on forever. Um, but Cheryl, you, he would not quit talking about how much of a backbone you were to him at his last of days. You know, and he kind of struggled feeling guilty. He felt you did so much for him, you know. So I just, I don't want to make you cry, but please know that, I mean, he, he loved all of you, but he just made it so clear how very much you've been there for him. And just, anyway, so thank you for sharing Wendell with us, and I'll always love him.
Yeah, talk real loud. I'm the chef here, and um, <coughs> we don't need, he was very thankful every day for everything he did. The servers, the caregivers, he was so thank you and how much he appreciated everything he did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Deary Hickok. I speak for both my wife and I, uh, Rosie and Rebecca. We lived here, um, got acquainted with uh, Wendell about three and a half years ago. And uh, I didn't know him as well until the last visit, and I think uh, his family, Cheryl, and was it Terry, that was there, and a grandson, and uh, one of the residents, we were just back there visiting, and um, one of the residents sent me down on the second floor said, oh, window's not doing well, uh, you might want to go see him. So we knocked on the door, and invited us in. I think I got there first and was visiting a little bit and Rosie came in and uh, it's a visit I'll never forget. Um, I've been a chaplain for like 25 years and I've dealt a lot with people at the end of their life in the later years. And you know, I'm used to going in as a chaplain and trying to present some hope and encouragement and pray for people. Wow, what a surprise. What a surprise. I went in there and uh, oh, it's incredible. He was encouraging, the room was just full of love and encouragement and peace, like I've seldom seen. Uh, he was laying there in the middle of the room, you know, and just uh, said <laughs> shortly uh, after I got there, and he said, well, Terry, just a matter of fact, he said, well, I'm ready to go. And I just said, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, I'm at peace, you know, I know where I'm going. And I said, that's great. And so, anyway, and then he shared, this has been alluded to and mentioned by several of you. I, I appreciate his, his humility and his transparency. Wendell said very clearly and so unmistakably, he said, Jerry, he said, uh, I regret that I spent most of my life not telling people I love them. He said, my parents were just brought up early. They didn't tell us they loved us. They showed it by their actions. We kind of knew they loved us. And he said, they didn't really say it. He said, I regret that I did not tell my children, you know, for many years, so later on, that I really loved them. He said, I tried to show them by my actions, but he said, I just couldn't get myself to say that. And then he said, and this is beautiful, he just says, now, and this is kind of my paraphrase, he said, it's sort of like I'm making up for lost time. You know, I'm just telling everybody I love them. <laughs> I tell my family, I tell strangers, I tell all the staff here, all the residents. And he said, Jerry, I love you. And coming from a man of his stature, it's, it's powerful. It's incredible. Those three words, aptly spoken, genuinely spoken. You know, it's one thing to say. Anybody can say, oh, I love you. But if their actions show different, it's meaningless, right? <laughs> when he said that, I knew he meant it from the depths of his heart. And uh, when Rosie came in, he said, Rosie, I love you. And, uh, you know, it's just, oh wow, this, I'm just so thankful uh, for Wendell's life, and right up to the end, uh, I knew he loved his wife, he, uh, when she was over here on this side, she moved to the other side, and he would talk about her always lovingly, and share wonderful memories, uh, their 
times together. So uh, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yes, come on. Um, you guys come up or? Yeah. It helps everybody. Um, so the last time I visited my great grandfather, he told me a story about um, how they went to go look at this horse and he fucked his dad off. <laughs> <laughs> I got knocked off my first horse, and he just wanted me to keep riding and get back on. as many of you know and have heard. So I'm Alex, I'm, I'm the executive director at Avimer at Sandy. I've been at this location since May. And the first day when I came in, took over the position, guess what? Wendell was the first man in my office. <laughs> yeah. He introduced himself, he said who he is, what he does, how long he's been. Um, we had a really good conversation, and I think you would say this, we became our best friends. We truly became our best friends. Um, I've never had the grandparents in my life, I've never seen them in my life, and Wendell became one of my grandfather, and I, I can call him as grandfather. Um, we've had a conversation, and you know, as Sherry mentioned, he's been a very positive man, and even, you know, there's been a hard days, one of the things I have learned, he's always been positive. Um, at that time, I've had fiance, we were getting, you know, to married, and there's three things he mentioned, and which is, I think, those are, were valuable lessons for me, which is, I learned and I tried to utilize in my life. He mentioned, Alex, number one is, do things together. If you want to be happy, and we actually celebrated his 70 years of anniversary, he said, you know, if you want to be happy, go ahead and do things together. Whatever we've done, shopping, we've always done together. Yeah. Number two, he's like, have a communication. Always have open communication with your wife. And then the third thing he mentioned, travel. Always go do fun and travel. So as many of you know, he has traveled for, I believe, 14 years straight. And one of the things, I actually, I love to travel as well, so I mentioned, you know, when I love to travel, we had some conversation, he's like, you know what, travel with your wife, do things together, and that's gonna just take you, that, that's the, you know, road to success. And the last day when I seen him, he mentioned, you know, Alex, I think I steer you to the right direction, and as long as you keep going, you will hit the 70 years of anniversary, so, <laughs> and again, um, he will be missed. All of this stuff and just the love I've seen from him and, and stuff, and he truly became uh, my family. It's just, we're, we're all family, but Wendell definitely was, I could call him as my grandfather. There's a lot of things I have 